Hi, this is Jim Gibson, and uh, you know I've been looking around the internet at some of the videos that uh, I've seen, and and also we received numerous questions concerning this topic of 66 blocks and how they work and how to punch them down and and how to handle them and how to do cross connect and things like that. And I'm not really seeing a good video on it. Um, we have other videos that show the 25 pair uh, being punched down, but we don't have any video showing how to punch down house pairs. And again, these are your 66 blocks. Uh, they do have standoff brackets. We sell them with the standoff bracket because in reality, um, even though it's possible with these little uh, uh, slots here that you can actually bolt it down onto a backboard or a wall or whatever you want, it's really not the way to do it. You, you really need standoff brackets. And um, on top, of course, we have these mushrooms. All this stuff you can buy on our website. And um, I really need to see how it's done and done right. And so today's demonstration is going to be just how to uh, punch down house cable. And then what I'm going to do is later is I'm going to use this 66 block over here to show you how an RJ21X uh, brings in dial tone from the phone company and how you should bring it over to the, uh, 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 the phone line there. And we're also going to talk about some other things such as bridge clips. These are bridge clips. Um, and uh, look a little bit in detail about the 66 blocks. So let's take a look first. And what I have here is uh, a pick. This pick is used for when you're pulling cable up in between there. You really have a hard time getting the cable if it's punched down wrong. So you need a, this little pick. And I've had this for years, and this is great. Uh, one end is metal. Of course, you don't want to use that if you have uh, um, in your, uh, you have any electricity going through the cable. You don't want to use that. This end, of course, is plastic. So it's completely safe to use even on a live circuit. And you really need this. And again, all these things I'm going to show you today, we sell on our website. But if you notice, I'm going to take my pick here. If you notice, uh, the 66 block, it's called a split 66 block. In other words, electrically, it's not connected here. But it is connected between these two and these two. So um, you have four pins here, but, but, but on the right, uh, two of them are connected, and on the left, two of them are connected, and electronically, they're insulated down in the middle. So it's called a split 66 block, and this is the standard uh, used in voice. Uh, when you're using digital voice, uh, some of the older analog fax machines, things like that. It's also the standard that your phone company usually uses um, when they bring in dial tone uh, from the outside. Um, you don't want to use this for uh, computers, and you don't want to use this for voice over IP. Uh, obviously, voice over IP telephone systems are really small computers, and you want to treat them as such. So what I have here is I just have some wires I put together. as a scrap wires, you can see. And uh, just so you understand that, uh, you know, this is not a live circuit, but this is just a demonstration. I'm going to show you how to... Uh, uh, use, and in this case, what, five cables? So we're going to install five cables along here and you get an idea of what it's going to look like and how to do it. So the first thing you want to do is you're going to take your cables and of course you always feed, you try to feed, I should say, from the bottom. So if it's coming from the, the ceiling, you want to bring down and you want to put a little loop there and, uh, and bring it up from the bottom. So you feed your 66 blocks and there's no technical reasons why you have to feed it from the bottom. It's just custom and there's so many things in telecom and cabling and computers uh, that's a custom. That's the professional way to do it. Uh, doesn't mean you have to do it that way all the time but you try to bring your feed cable in from the bottom. So I'm going to bring the feed cable in from the bottom and I'm going to bring it out the side here as you can see. And I'm going to give a little bit of a distance there. Then I'm going to take my excessively long zip ties. I don't know why I have such long ones, but it doesn't really matter. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie wrap it. So I want to tie wrap this really tight. Now remember you're doing computers, uh, computer cable, and you don't tie wrap the, the cable excessively tight because you don't want to pinch the cable and squeeze it so tight that it loses its uh, 
characteristics of separation between uh, the conductors and therefore loses its ability to transmit uh, data the distance that it needs to be. But at any rate, if you could see this, so what I'm going to do is tighten down that tie wrap as tight as I can possibly get it. You're not going to damage the cable if it's for voice. There's a couple things with voice that's different than uh, data, and this is one of them. Tighten the cable down significantly so it's not going to move. See, it's nice and solid there. And then, of course, you just cut off your excess on, on this, and just regular wire cutters. You get them anywhere. Uh, it's kind of interesting here, I'll be talking as I do some of these things, that the, the old uh, linemen, uh, and a lot of people still use it today, but they use the, uh, the scissors. I've had these scissors probably for about 20 years, and, and you don't hold them like this. You don't hold them like that. By the way, we sell these also on our website, you know, like you're cutting paper or something like that. You don't do that. Um, what you do is you put your finger through like that, and uh, you use the edge. And right here you have a little place where you put your thumb and you cut this way. Now, I'm not a lineman, okay? So you look at some of these telephone company guys that are out on the corner street there and they, a lot of times they have a little umbrella over their head and they're, they're sitting on a uh, little stool and, and they're doing uh, um, uh, cabling. And the type of cabling they're doing is uh, uh, connecting different cables together and making sure they're, they're dressed down. This is called dressing it down. And you'll see them doing this and they usually have the scissors with them when they do this uh, and they're, they're cutting that way. Nice thing is you can also use these to strip uh, wire and this is little strippers here. There's two little notches in there if you can see them or, or strippers. So your thumb goes here, your hand, your finger goes through and uh, that's how you use it. Use it like this. And, uh, anyway, that's how you do it. Um, and uh, usually the older technicians, I've seen a lot of the older ones, they just use this exclusively. You'll see the younger technicians will use this diagonal cutters uh, 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 to do their work. But one of the first things you want to do, and remember, you want to pull this further uh, than the end of the block, and I'll show you the reason why. So you're going to get to the end here, and you're going to cut a little bit. Okay. Now, the reason why I'm doing it this way is because when it's time to um, uh, trim down, all this, this area where I just cut is going to be cut away. And the reason why I want to cut that away is because as I was cutting here, uh, I may have nicked that cable. I don't want any nicked cables because that's a weakness in the cable. Um, and so you want to be able to see that, that, that right there. Uh, and so what you do is you take this string and this string is, is used for pulling back and you're going to pull it back and you're going to pull back as far as it possibly can go all the way to the edge and then you're going to pull the cable out and you're going to cut off both the string and the excess and the further back you can get it the neither, neater the job is And I think this is Cat 6, so this is kind of tight cable. You can use any cable when it comes to voice. Cat 3, Cat 5, Cat 5e. I don't know anyone sells Cat 5 anymore. Um, but one of the things you do here, it's a little trick I learned many years ago, is you take this, you take your, your little end piece there that you just cut off. So you're going to take this, you're going to put it through just one of the wires, and then you're going to spin it and it unwinds it for you. And this is a pretty good uh, uh, thing because sometimes these cables are wound so tight together that it's difficult to unwind them. So you just keep on turning and they unwind. And you don't want to unwind more than you need. Now notice it's blue and white. It's called blue-white. That's your first pair. And the white pair goes up above. And then what you do is you come down and you hook it on that hook right there. And then you just bring it back. Now I'm going to do the other cables here. Orange pair is the second pair. Again, I'm going to use that little end piece that I, uh, I took off. I just keep on twisting all the way down to the end.
Notice that? that? That's good. I'm glad that did that. You see how that just broke off in my hand right there? That's where we did the original cut into the cable and I nicked the cable. I couldn't see it, but I nicked the cable. So all it took was just a little bit of stress and the cable completely broke off at that point. So that's why I say that you always have to cut above when you cut the, the insulation. You always have to be above the service area when you cut that and then you strip back and then you're going to cut off the excess. So you know you have cable that has not been nicked. So again, the white goes on top. I'm going to go down to the next two. Now, the tighter you keep it here on the side, the better off you are. Next pair is the orange pair. Orange pair is the next pair. And we're going to... Oh, I thought you said come here. I'm sorry. Okay, the next pair is your... I'm sorry, it's, it's your blue pair, then your orange pair, and then the next one is your green pair. So you do the, the turning on your green pair. And again, the white first, the white insulator first, and then you hook it on to the next two. Again, pull it as tight as you can, within reason, and then hook around. Remember, neatness does count on this. And these things have little hooks on them, like this, so when you cook, hook the wire around it, it actually attaches to it. And of course, the brown, brown pair. I need to speed up the video at this point. So as you can see, I want to get that as far down as I possibly could on there to make it neat. And then I'm going to trim it up. You can use the same color code, blue, orange, green, brown, white first. Again, I'm going to be twisting that wire. White on, uh, on top. And uh, actually, it's white, blue, and blue, white. But the primary color being white wrapped with blue is going to go on top. And then come on around.
So I'm really pulling considerably on this when I'm tying it down. So as you can see, you see that wire right there? It's sticking out just a little bit. You can see it tighten up. So I'm pulling on this a lot of it's a considerable amount of force, and then I'm hooking it on the hooks and pulling it back out. So what we have here is we have what's called a punch down tool, and it's a really handy tool to have. This is a, a Fluke um, D814, uh, 814. Uh, this has been around as long as I've been around in telecom and it's a, a solid uh, punch down tool. Blade goes in here, blade storage is in here. You can buy it with two uh, stainless steel blades. I think they're stainless steel, they're shiny. How's that? Um, but they last pretty much a lifetime. One is a 110 blade and I think it actually it say 110 there. We're not going to use that today so I'll put that aside. Uh, the other is a uh, 66 blade. There's a 66 blade. Now, this is just a protector. You can throw these away. If you notice, one side has a cutting angle on it. it has a little blade that cuts. And uh, the other side does not. It's flat. Um, both of them can fit over the little teeth that stick up with no problem at all. And what you do is, today we're going to use the cutting. Actually, today we're going to use both, but for now we're going to use cutting. So you slide it in and it snaps in place when you turn it. Now the nice thing about that is you can't put it in wrong. So you can only put it in one way. And so when it says cut there, says cut, that's where the blade's at. That's the side that the blade's on, right there. So now we have a 66 blade in place. Now next you have the ability to change the impact strength, the cutting strength, low or high. That's pretty much a preference. Some people like it high. I don't really care. It's, you know, I use high, low, I don't really care. But let me show you the, the 110 blade. It's the 110 blade. Notice this has a cutting and it has a regular push down. Now I'm going to show you what that push down is a little bit later in the video. But on this cutting uh, side, the same thing happens. It will only go in on the cut side. So it will only fit in a certain way. And it usually fits in like that. But I wanted to show you the storage. So you take the blade, you drop it in, you turn this little wheel. There's a wheel on each side, same wheel. You turn it, and as you turn it, it drops in. And if you want it out, you turn the blade, or turn the wheel, same direction, and it drops out. Now next, we're going to punch down these cables. I'm going to do all five. I'm going to punch down these cables. And I'm going to take the punching side, I mean the cutting side. See where it says cut? I'm going to take the cutting side and we're going to go down like this. Okay. So we always go over the top and then we cut at the bottom. So I'm going to cut. I'm going to go to the next one. And it, you see how it got caught on that one lip? That's no big deal. You can actually just pull it. But it also, that's what these picks are for. Actually, you could, at this point, it's so easy, you could pull it. But you just pull it up and it's out. And that's your punch down there. So now I'm going to go on. And I'm pulling back a little bit. But as you can see, 
as you cut down it pushes it and then it snaps and that snapping sound as you're pushing it in to that little blade in there it has that little split in there so that that little split like this it splits apart pushes the wire down between it now what it pushes it to a certain extent to keep out oxygen and it's called a gas tight connection even though you look at it you wonder how could it be gas tight well because the clip is so tight that when you push the wire down it squeezes it it strips off the insulation and it's, it compresses the um, the copper and the reason why you want a gas tight connection in this case is because uh, you don't want any tarnishing um, in the, uh, on the cable because if it tarnishes between the two connections it will produce a resistance and in some cases especially if you're dealing with an analog signal you'll get a bunch of popping and whistling and stuff like that on moist days so you always want to uh, get that gas tight connection and that's what a 66 block does for you so I'm going to finish this punch down and again my cut is downward okay so I go over the top with the wire and then I cut downward sometimes like this you hit it twice notice the wires are being pushed down I just looped them before when I was looping them I just looped them on that little hook that sits there I didn't really push them down yet. So some people grab a bunch of them at the same time. The only reason I pushed them through this was just to hold them in place. So some people grab a couple of them like this and they pull on them. You don't have to pull tight, but you know, a couple of pounds worth of pressure. And then as they pull them, it comes out. The excess keeps it nice and tight. Oh, I'm glad this happened, so I can show you something here. Now, I double punched. Um, I wasn't paying attention because I was watching the video, so I double punched. And so I got a problem here. This is rare. It really is rare. Uh, but you want to make sure you don't do that. So what I have here is I'm going to use my pick. So I'm going to make sure it's cut. And um, right here, I'm going to take my pick. So I'm going to get underneath. And we'll pull that wire out. Now, I'm going to pull the whole wire out. There's that wire. I just pulled it out, and I'm going to pull out the mistake that was underneath it. So what you see is you see that little piece of wire in there, and I'm going to go in and get it after I've already unattached it. And there it is. See it? Now that would have shorted out your circuit if I left it there, if I wasn't paying attention. But now, I'm going to show you another technique. You see, because I have this thing that is really short now. If you see it, look at it. And some people say, well, how do you punch that down again? I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to take my needle nose pliers and grab a hold of it. And this happens. You can't do the whole thing over again, so you pull on it, and then you wrap it around. If I can actually get it. Again, this is the shortest one I've ever done. Did you see that, how I wrapped it around? Using the pliers. Take my cut, punch down, make sure I got my cut facing downward. And I'm going to go right over top of that, and I'm going to push it down. And that's how you repair. So once in a while, you oh gosh, I've done that a handful of times in my life. Uh, punch down the wrong cable and the wrong switch. And so what, what you do then at that point is, uh, you know, you got you to use your, your pick, and you got to get a nice needle nose. And... Uh, pick it out and then pull it like I just did and wrap it around. It's rare. Uh, maybe it happens more than I think. But it does happen. And these things, I'm going super slow. By now I could have done like 50 of these. 
blocks. But just to show you how slow I was going, and you can go a lot quicker. I just have a habit of hitting it twice. Other people just do once. Everyone has their own way of doing it. I like twice. I want to get it way down in there. After a while, you can develop your own style, as long as it works. Pragmatism rules, in this case. As long as it's, it works, and it's neat. Now notice this, this is nice and neat here. You don't want it sticking out. You don't want the wires, you know, something can get caught onto it. That's sloppy. So if you look down here, all the color code is correct. And uh, remember, this side of this, this side of the... Uh, 66 block is not connected to this side. So this is electrically connected to that wire, but not over here. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you how the phone company brings in their lines to a 66 block. And that's a little different um, than how a house 66 block is handled. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay, what I'm simulating here is, let's say this is the phone company's uh, dial tone coming into your building and this is your building cabling that we just did a couple minutes ago well how do you get the dial tone over to here now remember these are split 66 blocks but it, you're going to see this as being a little different than over here and what we're going to do is I'm going to take my cross connect cable this is a cross connect cable 1000 foot and you can make your own actually you know from scrap uh, and it, all it is is the blue-white pair. Uh, that's all you need. You just need one pair. Um, years ago, it used to be that uh, you needed more than one pair on, uh, on system telephones. Sometimes you needed up to three or four pairs. Uh, one would be the data, the other would be the uh, voice, the other would be the power and things like that. But today, digital phones, and again, we're talking about digital phones or analog systems like fax machines, modems, if anyone really uses modems anymore, uh, or any of those other things. Um, that's what you need to do. You need to uh, only use a one pair uh, because that's all they require is just one pair. So what I'm going to do is, let's say if this is, and again, as a phone company brings it in, they only bring in dial tones, one dial tone per pair of cables. And here I got four cables here. So let's say there's four dial tones here. And this is our first jack, let's say, right here. Um, and that's an RJ11. And of course, the two center print pins on an RJ11 is where you get your uh, voice path. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to do a cross connect. Now, one of the things I want to show you here is that you don't go and use these pins in the center. And of course, the question would be if you've been following, uh, uh, the video, you know that these pins are not connected to these pins over here. Now the dial tone's coming in over here, but it needs to go out over here. And I'm going to show you how that works. So first let's hook up to the first jack. And so I'm going to put this in here to the first jack, and I'm going to punch it down. And you know once in a while when you're dealing with dial tone, you get a little spark. Don't worry about it. Now ring tone, when it sends ring signal down, you're going to get a little shock. It's nothing permanent and it won't kill you. But what you want to do here is you want to take this over top here and you want to put a little loop here. See this little loop here? You want that nice neat loop there. And then what you're going to do is once you break it out, you're going to go to the far right pin and you're going to punch it down. So I'm going to have a little loop on each side and I'm going to show you in a second what that loop's for. So. I'm going to punch this down now. Now, a couple of things happened here that we weren't talking about earlier, so let's talk about some of these things. First of all, you have your mushrooms. A mushroom is part of your cable management system, and you've got to have them in reality. They're not that expensive. They screw right in. Uh, they work great, and they keep your cables organized. Now the next thing is we put these two loops here. 
And the reason we put these two loops here isn't because we like put loops in things or waste cable, but it's because if we got, if there's a lot of cables going across here and they're all going down here and we need to know where this is attached, then what you do is you kind of just pull on this and it wiggles on the other side. And you can see which of the cables, if we have multiple attachments, and maybe we'll do that a little later, you'll see which cables uh, attach. Now, I'm going to use what's called bridge clips. I'm going to bridge over from here to here. And I'm going to show you the reason why you want to bridge over. So I'm going to take two bridge clips, and we do sell these on the website. Everything you see here we sell on the website. So I don't want to keep on repeating myself. And these are bridge clips. And this is what they look like. It's little pieces of metal, some sort of stainless steel. They don't rust, I know that. And what you do is you slide in between the two pins. Yeah, not like that. So they grab the two center pins. And now you have connected the first line, the first line coming in from the phone company, you've connected to this wire here that's attached to a, uh, a uh, jack out in the uh, office somewhere. Now remember, when I punch down the second time, I punch down on this pair for the cross connect, not this one. That you don't want to double punch, that's called. That's pushing two wires into the same um, connection. You don't want to do that uh, because it won't work. Uh, you'll have a lot of problems. So this is a different connection, but electrically, these two are connected. So uh, we go to the second, the inner one. Now, I'm sure you're wondering, well, then why don't I have bridge clips on this side and not this side? Why didn't I bring it in on here? Well, good question, and I'll explain to you why you don't. Now, remember, dial tone's coming up here, and it's going over these two wires here. That's this one pair. Remember, think in pairs. goes across that wire, then out here. And then uh, everything's working great. Then one day you lift up your telephone, and you don't hear the dial tone, and you can't dial out, and you don't know what's going on or maybe have a tremendous amount of static on that dial, uh, that path, and you're wondering what's going on. And uh, Of course, what you do is now you take your, what's called a butt set. Some people call, you know, I, I think it's called butt set because it butts in, but sometimes technicians hang it on their belt and it bounces off their butt. And maybe that's why it's called a butt set. And what you have here is you have your little connections. And if you look at these connections, how they have an opening. They're perfectly matched so you can go right on to a 66 block and grab it. But that's not going to help you because the only thing you're going to hear then is the same static you heard on your, on your phone. And you've got to figure out, is it in-house you're having problems or are you having problems with the phone company? So you take your pick, take your nice little pick, and you pull out the bridge clips. You pull these bridge clips out. And that's why they have those little holes there. So you can get the, the pick in there and pull them out. Now you can pull them out other ways. You can use needle nose, that'll work. Now you're separated from the phone company. Remember this is the phone company RJ21X it's called, and it usually has a red cover to it. And if you open a red cover on the right, it will tell you the uh, phone numbers. So what you do now is you go to the phone company side and you connect your bridge clips like this. And once you attach your, I'm sorry, not your bridge clips, your alligator clips, attach them there. Now you are directly connected to the phone company. And at the same time, you are not uh, connected to anything within the building except the cable that's going to the phone company. So you take your butt set, you make your dial, you listen to see if there's static. If there's no static, then what you do is you most likely have a problem on your side. Um, once you discover where the problem is, then you put back your jumpers, your bridge clips. So that means now that electrically the line's coming in from the phone company, it's going over to here, it's crossing over the bridge clips, it's going from uh, one end uh, or, or into this wire going across, it's called cross connect, so it's going across the cross connect. So it's coming from here, right here, and it's going across the cross connect going into uh, 
the first jack. And uh, that's basically um, a, a good background of 66 blocks and uh, how they work and what they're used for. Again, they do not work, uh, they claim they work for computers. I would never use them on a data side. Um, they are a voice uh, side only, unless you're bringing in a data circuit like a T1, um, a PRI, a BRI, all those circuits are digital. That's the only time I would bring digital across the 66 block. In fact, that's, you got to bring them in on a 66 block. But I would not hook up individual voice over IP phones or uh, computer systems across a 66 block. They're not designed for that. That's patch panels. That's 110 punch down. That's a little different. That's why on your, on your um, uh, punch down tool, you should have both blades um, and you should have a professional punch down tool. Uh, these things will last you uh, your whole career. Uh, they're so sturdy. And uh, of course, they had that little string, that little uh, spring in there, uh, which generates the cut. Um, so this is how you, you do this. This is pretty normal. Uh, if you had cross connect going this way, you'd go around here, around that way. If you had other 66 blocks uh, that you had a cross connect to. Um, let me show you one other thing. Once in a while, someone says, they call up and they say, you know, um, I have uh, just a single line telephone. That means, you know, there it's an analog phone. And, uh, but we have three or four of them in the office. And what we want to do is we want to connect multiple phones together using the same line. It's not a phone system now. They're single line phones and they want to connect multiple phones. So it's sort of like at your house when you pick up a, a phone in the bedroom and it's for your son who's sitting downstairs on video games. You yell down and you say, pick up that phone, son, it's for you. As soon as he picks it up, you hang up. Well, how does that uh, work with a 66 block? Let me show you how that works. First, let's take off this old cross connect. And, and you see how I'm doing it? I'm taking it out of the slots and I'm pulling it straight out. It won't come out this way. So if you're pulling this way, you got to, I don't know, I guess eventually you can rip the cable out. But the way you get it out is you lift it up and then pull up. So now I'm going to connect it for multiple uh, phones using the same phone line. So I'm going to bring it in like I would normally do. Hook up that dial tone, right? I'm going to go over the top and down. Give myself a little more space there. Over the top and down. Keep the pressure on it. Then I'm going to punch down. And now I'm connected to line one. And that line has to go to the three other telephones. Of course, I'm going to make my service loop in there, that little loop here. You know, and you know, you figure it out. You get a habit after a while. You make them all about the same size. And uh, then I'm going to do something that's unusual. I'm going to take my cutting blade. You see that cutting blade there? Of course, it says cut. I'm going to take it out. And I'm going to use the non-cutting blade. Rarely use this, but you're going to use that today. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow the color code, white on top, and I'm going to push it down the way it's supposed to, going through the right, the, the perfect slots for it. Bring it down. Get a little bit of that twist out of there. And then I'm going to take it back out again. So you see that? It goes in and out. Then I'm going to take my non-cutting blade, and of course you can go either way now, and I'm just going to push it down. Pushed it down, and it didn't have to snap, it didn't cut, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the next blue pair. I'm going to keep a little loop in there, and I'm going to go to the next one, and I'm going to break out according to color code. And uh, here's my next blue pair. And again, I'm going to go to the second pin, not the first pin. Remember, we don't want to double punch uh, two wires down on the same one. And I'm going to bring it back out. Back out again, right? And it's punched down, it's pushed in there. And then we're going to go to the third one with a little loop, try to keep it neat so they're all uniform. Bring it back out again. 
push it down. Now the last one, I'm going to go back to my cutting tool. So I got my cut here. I'm going to go back to my cutting tool. It's in place. Boy, this is really a beautiful blade. My older system was black, not nice and like that. Anyway, so I'm going to go back in. But since this is at the end, and I'm not going to do this anymore, this is the last one I'm going to, I'm going to connect together. What I'm going to do here is, is I'm going to cut it. Uh, I didn't make that uniform. Sorry. Um, but that's how you do it. So it goes from the dial tone side of the phone system, from the phone company. It's going to go out here. It's going to go to the first jack, to the second jack, to the third jack, to the fourth jack. It ends, I cut off the excess. And that's called daisy chaining. And that's what you do when you have an analog line that needs to ring more than one phone. Um, don't do this with fax lines because if you hook up multiple fax lines, you'll have some issues with who's answering and who's not uh, type of thing. And of course, you can't dial out while someone else is on the line. So that's how you do the multiple uh, phones. Now, there is a thing called ringer equivalency, and you, usually it's on the bottom of a phone. And that means that you can only hook up so many phones this way. Keep on hooking them up, hooking them up. Pretty soon you get to a point uh, where if you hook up too many phones, the phone company can't send you enough current to ring each of the phones or all the phones, and it just won't ring anything. In fact, the phone company will think you have a dead short on the line and you think you have a problem. Um, you can legally and uh, uh, do this where you can hook up multiple phones to one phone line. It's not a problem. It does work. Done it for years. Nothing wrong with it. Technically, there's nothing wrong with it except when you hit that limit. When you hit that limit, you got too many phones on one line, they will not ring. So if you've you got to look at the manufacturer's um, uh, label at the bottom of the phone, and it will tell you what's called a ringer equivalency. Call the phone company. Sometimes when you're further from the phone company, you get less um, current. When you're closer, you get more. But you got to find out check with the phone company or try it. Try four phones, see if it works. Four shouldn't be a problem in most cases. Start to get up to six, seven, eight, and you're gonna have problems. But this is how it's done. Again, just to go through it, your feed cable goes at the bottom. Your cross connect goes over top. Cross connect is always a single pair. You can buy a cross connect reel. Uh, this is the reel, a thousand foot of cable. If you're a professional, you need something like this. If you're doing work at your house, uh, you can make your own cross connect from your scrap cable. Um, 66 blocks always have a standoff bracket. Uh, that's the way that every professional uses. You got the mushrooms, use the mushrooms. Um, they're gonna make your install nice and neat. Punch down tight to the side. I mean, you don't have to be a, a grill and just yank on it till the wire breaks, but put some strength in there so they're nice and tight. They're out of the way. And, uh, you know, mount them at a reasonable space. You can decide how far apart you want them and things like that. And uh, you use Split 66. It's the only thing we sell, so you don't have to ask for anything else. That's 99% that's of the market out there is Split 66 blocks. Don't forget your bridge clips. Uh, always connect them this way so you can separate your bridge, your uh, connection from the phone company anytime you need to check. Um, and again, if you got six phones and are not ringing, that might be the way to check it. Pull this off, see if you got dial tone, put it back on, see if you get dial tone. Uh, you may not be able to get dial tone with too many phones. Um, thank you for watching the video. I very much appreciate it. I always appreciate when people watch my videos. Please like us on Facebook. Um, please uh, uh, follow us on uh, YouTube. Uh, hi, this is Jim with CableSupply.com. Hi, this is Jim from CableSupply.com. Hi, this is Jim with CableSupply.com, and today I'm going to show you how to cut a hole in the drywall. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to this YouTube installment of CableSupply.com.